Hey guys, Sullivan here in Philadelphia. And, oh, Chewie's joining us. Hey, Chew. I've been working like a crazy person to finish some stuff up in the garden. I always try to take a little time off around 4th of July. And I've been busy finishing some projects. Bye, Chew. I'm gonna be taking a little time off, not for a fun vacation, but because I have some health stuff going on and I'm gonna need a kind of quieter July. So um, nothing too serious, no worries. Maybe I'll tell you guys about it someday. Um, but I thought that I would do a little voiceover for a lot of time-lapse footage. So a big, my, my big focus uh, before July 1 was to get my raised beds, my vegetable growing space in the potager. Uh, I really needed to spend some time cleaning that out. I had let the weeds kind of take things over. And also I had been storing a lot of iris there. You can see that the weeds had just really taken over. Uh, the soil really needed to be topped off. I don't have any weed barrier or anything under these beds. I have weed fabric under the screenings, the gravel that makes up the, the hard surface. But um, it's just, um, we use some fill dirt from last year's like big excavating project and then it's just good soil on top. So everything needed to be topped off. And also there was a few little irrigation things that needed tweaking. I needed to test everything to make sure that it was all working. And so this whole clean out process took more than a couple days because um, <laughs> the three less easy beds to clear out contained weeds and lots of iris. So it was sorting them out, finding homes, prepping some for some temporary storage through the summer and just kind of moving on with things. I have learned that in my seed starting efforts that it's, it's really just better for me to buy a few plants, um, tomatoes and squash and a few things like that, cucumbers. I can start all of that stuff from seed as well, but um, it just makes it a little easier for me to kind of plan out and think about what's gonna go in each bed. And I just didn't really have time in the heat of spring to get vegetable seeds growing. Um, I do try to mix things up in the beds. Uh, it's really important for me to always try to make things look interesting or beautiful. So you can see I'm spending a little bit of time to map out some diagonal rows for um, rainbow carrots. Uh, and <clears throat> for the most part, I'm really just keeping things simple in the veggie beds this year. I re we really eat tomatoes, salad greens, spaghetti squash, zucchini. I try to grow watermelons each year. And last year I got a honeydew and one watermelon. Um, and then, you know, a friend of mine <laughs> is, is tomato obsessed, my friend Sam, and he had started a lot of tomatoes and he gave me some. And when I did the count, I had, uh, 18 tomato plants and it just seems terrible to sacrifice them, but I've learned long ago not to put them in my flower beds because then they drop seeds and they just sprout everywhere. And then it's just, you're just murdering tomato plants all over the place. So, so I knew that I was going to have uh, two very full beds of tomatoes. These are only four by four beds, so they're definitely crowded. And if I staked them or used the trellises like I used, I didn't, they weren't, were they, they were, I guess they're like something like a willow obelisk, but um, it just got messy. And so I know that the most successful way I could probably maximize this space is to go vertical, but I am sort of, I'm doing a good job of using up all the trellis and, and window pieces and all these things that I have collected and saved over the years from weddings and antiquing. So I was out of trellises after I set up the squash and the cucumbers to climb up to more window like trellises. And so I really had to think about like, what could I do to put something over these raised beds 
that would allow me to cordon, to hang, um, to, to run the vines, the tomato vines, because most the best tasting tomatoes are usually indeterminate, I think. And they can get really long if you prune them carefully. And, you know, so what could I do to get some kind of suspended structure over these raised beds so that I could maximize and really like let all nine of these in each bed tomato grow? Solution seemed to be something between, um, I guess my background is a wedding person. Maybe I'm building a giant hoopa for each of my raised beds. Not giant, it's only four by four, but it's 10 feet tall. Or I'm building, um, I told my niece this morning, they were tomato pergolas. Um, they could be kind of anything, any name for a structure, but uh, it's, it allows you to do string trellising. Twine, I'm using black twine because I'm me and I have to have everything Everything, it, I need things to be functional, but I also need them to look exactly how I want them to. Uh, I'm not judging all the cool, great gardening inventions and stakes and things that are out there, but that green color that everybody paints everything, it, I, it, I can't. So I <laughs> needed black. Um, so I did some pricing out on this design. I knew that I needed to have a cross piece, either um, dividing it into four squares or how I ended up doing it on a diagonal. One, to support the height of the structure and two, because I knew that I wanted to suspend a string for one of the tomato plants right in the middle. And so if I just had the perimeter, I wouldn't be able to like get that middle plant. And I, you know, I, I drew out the design. I did the measurements really like, you know, roughly because um, I didn't know what the hardware was going to be to hold the pipes together. And I priced it out in copper. Um, I have some experience welding and soldering and things like that. So, but, uh, you know, like everything, copper is fairly expensive. So this plan I think was going to cost somewhere around like $250, $250 for the two beds out of copper. And then I looked at PVC, which based on some quick Googling after I moved forward with this, seems like that's a fairly common thing to do, but um, very functional, cheap. I think that one was going to be, I wrote it all down somewhere. I think the PVC was going to end up coming out to just under $100 to do the two beds. But I would have to glue the pieces together using PVC pipe adhesive. And I would also have to, in, in my case, I would have to spray paint them. And it gets a little, you know, I wanted to go really tall with these. And PVC can get a little wobbly. And so that means using slightly more expensive one inch PVC wouldn't be, um, or not one inch, I would probably need to go to two inch PVC, which would then look like a little clunky. So not really my um, aesthetic. Explored was maybe using some like two by two lumber, dimensional lumber, um, not as permanent, but also not as long lasting. Again, needing paint or stain of some kind. Um, probably a little more cutting than I would really wanna do. Uh, I think lumber pricing now, you know, it's fairly high, but let's call it somewhere in between PVC and copper. Um, and then just through Googling, I found this company based in the US called Maker Pipe. Um, that makes these holder, these, this hardware specifically for using electricians EMT conduit, which comes in half inch, three quarter inch and one inch. Uh, it's like an aluminum pipe. Um, and that came in right around uh, just like maybe 15% more than PVC. Now, again, it was going to need painting. So these all have been spray painted. I did not paint the hardware because I was order I was doing all of this kind of, kind of last minute. And um, the hardware does what it's supposed to do, but you can see, well, it's sort of like a beauty tutorial. Like 
you see me start to try to put one together and then honestly like working with the 10 foot pipe lengths and things like that and these things are kind of like their tension um they they use a single screw a double locking screw to create tension on the pipe and if you're putting two pipes into it you kind of need to tighten them both simultaneously so i found this to be very difficult to do by myself what i ended up doing off camera because it was very hot and i was up and down the ladder is i built the first one from a ladder and i would not recommend that the second attempt <laughs> Second one, you can see that I just, and I never ask for help, but I needed my husband, Tim. You got a rare Tim sighting on the, in the garden. Um, I needed a pair of hands to help me hold this stuff together. And for the most part, that one went much better. So when I say beauty tutorial for anyone that doesn't know, like a lot of times they do an eyeshadow look off camera and then come in and show you the second one. So I tried to do that here. I just needed to kind of see if it would work. Um, because of my background and making things happen for weddings and before that I used to design clothing stores and, and fixtures and all of this stuff like for the most part my ideas will work but there's like nothing worse than like rushing and scrambling and I was spray painting in the dark and all of this crazy stuff to try to get this done before this weekend so that I could go take care of myself for a few weeks and not have to worry about and just let the tomatoes grow. Um, so anyway, so, uh, it's very hard to see because everything's black and my shed and everything behind this is black, but, um, I got this heavy gauge twine. I'll put a link to it below. Um, I didn't buy enough, so I didn't have enough to do the twine for the second bed, though we did get the, the pergola, the tomato pergola. We got that one up. Thank God. Um, because I just, there, there's no way I'm going to be able to do it later in the summer. And, um, you know, in a few weeks when I'm back out in the garden, I can have Tim go up on the ladder and throw the twine over. And then, um, you know, there's lots of ways people use to control their tomatoes. A lot of people do something called Florida weave, um, with tea posts and things like that. So my thinking was, Originally, if I had had more twine, I probably would have done like a, like a braid, a three strand braid of twine for each plant, but I didn't have enough twine and I was trying to maximize it so I could at least get one bed completely finished. And I ended up using, um, a, they're nine, they're, there's 10 feet sticking up above the raised beds. There's, they're, the raised beds are like 15 inches deep. So um, so I ended up taking a 20 foot length of twine, throwing it over the post at the, the, the pipe at the top. Um, I used a zip tie up there to, um, to hold the twine in place because natural twine doesn't necessarily knot that well. Um, and zip ties are a, a, a floral designers go to. I often joke that almost everything you see in like an epic photo from a wedding is held up with zip ties and prayer. But um, <laughs> so I got the twine up. I twisted it pretty tightly because I knew once I tied it off, it would unravel a little bit. And then I experimented on, I, I did this for eight plants because I think one of them is a determinant in that bed. So it obviously doesn't need a string trellis. And um, it was actually really easy. Um, I'm gonna look forward to showing you guys through the summer how pruning and kind of weaving this through. But there's just enough tension on the twist in the twine to hold the vine where it needs to go. And um, I'm hoping that that means that I don't have to use any additional clips or wire or tape or anything. Um, it's just, you know, and I like the idea that maybe I'll get 10 feet of tomatoes growing up these things and can do it without. So um, the one thing that I'm not entirely sure I may have to tweak a little later on in the summer as we get some weight on the vines is I was using my irrigation stakes that um, these like kind of plastic hooks 
that I use for this, the, uh, the quarter inch drip tubing in the raised beds. I was using that to anchor the twine at the base. Um, ideally, you would do the twine at the root of the plants and maybe even bury it underground, but I was doing all of this like kind of super last minute and I didn't have the twine when I planted the plants and I have these stakes. So I think at some point I may need to switch to like landscape staples or something with like a little more weight or barb to it to kind of help hold it in though the, the beds are pretty soft and fluffy right now we had like a ton of rain and then I planted everything so tbd on that but the twist worked I was able to kind of take off any side shoots or suckers or anything that I didn't want on the the, the you know they're 16 inch tall plants right now and just kind of start training the leader of the vine up. So this, I mean, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. It certainly fits the aesthetic. I think um, while I'm kind of out of commission for a little while, I think Tim's gonna go touch up some paint and possibly spray paint the silver hardware for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. I have a garden tour coming up soon, as well as some progress outside the fence. I'm probably gonna break the two tours into two sections because the outside of the fence garden has become like its own thing. And, but um, I started finally making use of some of those expanded borders that we put in in the early spring. The cardboard has settled a little bit and the soil's starting to look a little better under there. So I got some things planted. And then thank you very much to my friend Sam for coming over this week and I drilled the holes with the auger and he threw the dahlias in and we got 250 dahlias in the ground. And most of them are staked, which is big progress for me since I always tell everybody, put your stakes in when you plant the dahlias, but I never do that myself, but I did run out of stakes. So, but that's a problem for later in the summer me. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys soon.